This is my gravel bike. I've only been cycling for a few years, but of all the types of bike that I've ridden in that time, this is by far my favourite. But it wasn't cheap. In fact, I had to tell my wife that we couldn't go on holiday after I bought this thing. Gutsiest move I ever saw. And because of its cost, and the way that I use it, just for fun and exercise really, a lot of people have told me that I was daft to spend so much. They said with my lack of experience, they doubt I'd even notice the difference between this and the cheapest gravel bike I could find. So, I went on Amazon and got the cheapest gravel bike I could find. I'm now going to ride them back to back and see if getting mine was a mistake. What, if any difference, can I spot between the two of them? Although there's one I've already noticed, I didn't have to cancel a holiday to get this thing. I did have to cancel a Burger King though, it was cheap, it wasn't free. So before comparing these two, let me just say why I'm enjoying gravel biking so much right now. I should point out, in case you're new to this channel, I've only been riding bikes since 2020 and the first year was spent on one that had no wheels. Since then I've done some mountain bike duathlons, I've raced my Cervelo TT bike a few times, but I'm still really inexperienced. Somebody with more history of cycling may not feel the same as I do about all this, but I love this thing. I'm not really interested in racing, those duathlons were fun, but I'm more just into getting out and using this on the weekend and enjoying exercising on it. And for that, neither the mountain bike nor the triathlon bike are ideal. The mountain bike too slow on the road sections, and I never really rode anywhere extreme enough off-road that I needed its trail riding qualities. The triathlon bike is certainly fast enough on the road, but that road really does need to be straight and smooth and flat. There might be some places where it'd be a great bike for a Sunday morning ride, but not really around here. So as soon as I took this thing out, I was just in biking heaven. It is plenty fast enough on the road for me, and unlike the Cervelo, will go around corners quickly too. It can easily handle the sort of easy trails that I encounter on my regular loop that I ride, and more important for me, it just feels safe and comfy and easy to use. I don't have to dodge holes and bumps in the road, I can take shortcuts that no road bike will be happy with, and I can load it up with a sandwich and just go out for hours. In fact, this summer I'm using this to do a chase the sun ride, 200 miles from one side of the UK to the other. It just does everything great. It's a perfect all rounder. But how much of that is down to it being a gravel bike and how much down to it being an expensive gravel bike? Okay, so here's the plan. There is a loop that is about five kilometers that I normally either finish or start my regular weekend ride with. So I know it quite well. I'm going to do it first on the cheap bike and then when I get back swap over and do it on my regular bike back to back as simple as that. And you know what for £300 the Amazon bike by Eurobike isn't actually that bad. It came with next day delivery, it was 90% built in the box, it took me about five minutes to just chuck the wheels on and tighten up the handlebars and that was it and everything about it does just seem fine. I mean, there's some pretty obvious indicators that you haven't postponed the Maldives for this thing. The gear change levers are these kind of kooky things set up on the center of the bars that are pretty flimsy. The disc brakes are cable operated, so you need to give yourself plenty of stopping distance. And I had to tighten everything up very tight to stop things like the handlebars from rotating and the seat post slipping, stuff like that. But on the plus side, I wasn't afraid of over tightening anything and damaging it because based on its 16 kilos, it seems to be made of solid iron. Luckily, the first section of my 5k loop was downhill and on the road, so the weight was not a huge disadvantage, and it is perfectly suited to that. It's comfortable, the tyres are not quite as wide as on my Specialised, but they're still able to soak up bumps in the road, and you have no fear about damaging expensive road bike wheels with narrow tyres in potholes and stuff. Those cable-operated brakes need hauling on to stop the thing, but to be fair, they may have improved with a bit more bedding in. And worth noting, I am riding it here literally as it came. The only thing I've added to it is a spare set of pedals that I had lying around. In fact, that spare set of pedals was some Garmin two-sided power meter ones that actually cost about three times the value of the bike. So I did have this rather odd concern that I needed to keep an eye out for hoodlums on a moped that might whiz up at any moment and threaten me with a power drill or whatever they use nowadays, I don't know, force me to listen to some gangster rap or something, and then just make off with just my pedals. But despite having my favorite Martin Lawrence line ready to go, Wesley Snipes, passenger 57. That never happened, and I reached the off-road section in one piece, and this is really indicative of the sort of stuff that I ride on for much of my gravel biking. 
basically footpaths like this or byways that can be wet and muddy and slippy in the winter and then drier and obviously faster in the summer. I am very rarely, if ever, going anywhere where an actual mountain bike would be the better choice. And it was fine over this stuff. The tires didn't struggle, it wasn't sliding around all over the place, and because the frame size is a bit smaller than my regular bike, it actually felt quite nimble. I said the frame size is a bit smaller, I didn't buy the wrong one. Eurobike make these like gloves or socks. This is a one size fits all men's bike, average height to tall height. Now where its bargain basement credentials did let it down was once the mud got a bit deep to plow through and required going around. You need to hold on the brakes to slow the thing down. Once you're at the right speed, you then need to shift your hands to those gear levers in the middle of the bars, adjust accordingly. And I have to be honest, the front shifter especially feels like a direct descendant from a rally chopper. Then you can steer around your obstacle. And then once you're confident you can ride with one hand again, you can adjust the gearing as you accelerate away. Now I'm not racing here, and importantly, when I'm out for a couple of hours keeping fit on a weekend, I'm not racing there either. I don't need to go as fast as possible. It's more just about confidence and how the lack of confidence takes some of the fun away from the experience. Coming up to an obstacle and having to treat it cautiously because the bike is a bit heavy and doesn't stop great and gear selection needs to be allocated in its own little time slot is not fun. To be fair, it's a bike much more at home on terrain that you could probably get away with riding a regular road bike on if you didn't mind wrecking it. This trail in the summer will be perfect along here. Where it's a bit less perfect was the one hill on this loop. It's about five kilos heavier than my Specialized and as somebody weighing over a hundred kilos, I didn't think another five would make much difference. It does. But once back on the flat, it was all good again. And to be fair, despite the front and rear mechanism now being covered in mud and gunk, the gear change never skipped a beat, always dropping into the right cog with a positive click. The levers feel cheap, but they work. As a road bike, something to commute on, to get around town, to use at the weekend without worrying about destroying it if you do venture off the tarmac a bit, it simply does the job. Okay, heading home. Ride one, done. Uh, time to swap bikes. I was starting to wonder if riding the Specialized would now leave me struggling to justify having spent the price of a small car more than the Eurobike on it. Okay, round two. I didn't struggle with that at all in the end. That Specialized Diverge Pro Carbon is, to me, worth every single penny. Obviously, you are paying for what you get, but you are getting lots. I wasn't sure on the color when I saw it online, but in real life, everyone that sees it loves it. The finish on it, as you'd expect, is immaculate. It's got the SRAM one by setup on it, so it's got no front mech, obviously, therefore it looks really clean. And importantly, it's also easy to keep really clean. It's got 12 speed on the back, all controlled with the ETAP AXS electronic shifting. Obviously, hydraulic brakes, everything's carbon. It's got a bunch of attachment points if you wanna add extra luggage or more water bottles and stuff. Interestingly, the Amazon bike only has space for one bottle. And in terms of weight, even with my pedals on it, my phone, my lights, my storage bags, uh, there's a bottle on there. I've got a toolkit stashed inside the frame in its own little cubby hole. So literally, ready to ride for the day, it's still five kilos less than the Eurobike. Now on the road, all that just makes it feel like a nicer bike. You can obviously tell you're on something a bit more expensive, a bit more special, but if all you did was ride on the road, you might question the value for money. In fact, a comparison of an expensive road bike versus a Euro bike road bike would be a closer battle. Because as soon as this thing goes off road, it leaves the other miles behind. There is no comparison. With its bigger frame size, it doesn't feel as nimble, but everything just works so well together that it makes its bigness a non-issue. And that everything else is a lot of stuff. First of all, it's got what Specialized call Future Shock 2.0. It's basically 20 mils of hydraulically dampened travel that sits underneath the stem. You can adjust how firm it is or isn't with a dial on top. It's the sort of thing that seems like a complete gimmick until you ride it and realize it's brilliant. On the road, it soaks up just about everything and it means you don't need to be swerving around lumps and bumps and drain covers and whatever other junk is in the road the way that you would on a regular road bike. And off-road, especially on trails like this, you can absolutely fly along with no jarring through the bars and no concerns about hitting rocks and tree roots. And then there's the SRAM spec stuff, 
The brakes are brilliant in the wet or the dry. Being fully carbon, the bike is obviously light, but I am not, so anything that can stop me reassuringly quickly gets my vote. And then the wireless electronic gear shifting. For me, probably the highlight of the bike. I've used the Shimano Di2 version on my Cervelo, so I'm not new to electronic shifting, but on the road, it always felt like a kind of a cool luxury that was very clever, but that was about it. Off-road, it just comes into its own. I could fly up to obstacles, grab the brakes, click down a couple of gears at the same time, pedal around the obstacle in exactly the right gear, and then power out the same, shifting as I go, hands never having to leave the hoods, interacting with the brakes and the gears and the steering all at the same time. It's almost like a cheat mode that never leaves your legs spinning too fast or too slow. And it was the thing that made the biggest difference between the two bikes. And there's no denying that the thing being very light is very good. When it does get bashed offline, it's easier to correct it. It never feels like you're having to sort of haul it around. And as a result, you can take on slightly larger obstacles with far less thought. For example, just being able to easily lift the front wheel over water-filled ruts that might be deeper than they look. Both the bike's weight and that 20 mil of travel in the front end just allows you to do stuff like that very simply. And of course, the weight is also nice when it comes to getting up actual hills. It turned the same incline into something that I felt I was able to power up as opposed to slugging up. Ride two done. Joe, going into this, I was quite happy. Genuinely quite happy to be proven at least a little bit wrong. Uh, for it to be shown that the cheaper bike is not necessarily better than, but almost as good in many ways as this thing. But um, it's not. This thing is just infinitely better than the Amazon bike in every way. That was a lot of fun. So the result was that the Specialized Diverge Pro Carbon was faster by almost two and a half minutes over that short course. But there's more to it than just going quicker. It's why I went quicker. So on neither ride was I going flat out. I was deliberately just riding at my sort of out for a Sunday ride speed, trying to consistently go quick enough to provide good exercise and keep my heart rate high. The reason the Diverge was quicker by so much is because I wasn't slowing down for obstacles in the same cautious manner. I mean, I did have to slow down. I could brake later. I could arrive at the obstacle in the right gear, therefore, and accelerate away more readily. Again, because of that ability to shift gear while braking and steering all at the same time. But for me, the biggest improvement wasn't that all those differences made for a quicker ride. To be honest, whether I get home two or three minutes later or sooner simply just makes no difference. It was that it made for a more fun ride, less time being apprehensive, more time being confident, and just having the enjoyable sensation of whizzing along. And that is what it felt like here. A mountain bike would have been overkill for the trail and slower on the faster sections that were on it, and obviously massively slower on the road. A road bike would have only been marginally quicker on the road, but would then have been wrecked on the trail. Bottom line, if I had to ride that loop as fast as I possibly could, I would pick to do it on my Diverge. Interestingly, there's now a new Specialized Diverge for 2023 with suspension travel added to the back end as well, but it has jacked up the weight and the price of an already expensive bike, and I'm not entirely sure, even if they were the same cost, that I would pick it. The way I ride, the stuff I ride on, I am never really feeling like more suspension travel would solve any problems. For me, as it is, it's the perfect bike that can do 90% of things very well. Although I've got to say, the Eurobike was no way near as bad as I thought it might be. I had images of it just falling apart halfway around and just having to leave it in the bushes somewhere. I even took a spanner with me so I could whip off those pedals and throw it in a ditch and walk home. But it did great, and for something to ride to work on, to take to the gym and not panic about leaving it locked up outside, to get out on at the weekend and get some exercise with, if your budget is suited to that type of bike, I don't think you'd be disappointed. And I think the gravel bike concept works at that end of the market too. If you had the road bike version of this, I really don't know what you'd gain over the gravel bike version. I think the gravel bike idea is just a good one all round. And this is a fine version of it. In fact, it's so fine that if I had space, I would genuinely keep it. I'd use it for cycling to the gym or the pool, where I'd be okay locking it up outside in a way that I never would be with a Specialized. If that thing went missing while I'm halfway through a workout, there is no Martin Lawrence one-liner that would make that situation better. 
Unfortunately, I don't have space, so it's getting cleaned up and made as good as new, and I'm giving it to a local charity that helps out families in need. Hopefully then a local kid can get himself to school on it every day, or go visit an elderly relative they might not be able to do otherwise, or just bunk off school and cycle to the chip shop with all of his mates. I'll put a Mark Lewis YouTube sticker on it, so at least I might pick up some subscribers from a younger demographic if he does do that. Okay, that is it. In summary, was I right to get the Specialized? Yes, absolutely, and you would be too, if it is sensibly affordable for you and you enjoy riding the sort of terrain that I've shown in this video. So it turns out it was worth skipping that holiday for, and of course the cheaper bike worth skipping the Burger King for, probably. Maybe. I don't know, I love a Burger King.